Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain sampling theory with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about analog signal to digital signal conversion. After that, I will explain basics of sampling theory. After that, I will explain waveforms and frequency spectrum of sampling. After that, I will explain aliasing effect and Nyquist rate. And at last, I will discuss about key steps to avoid aliasing effect. So let us start this video with first agenda that is analog signal to digital signal conversion. One should know analog signal is continuous in time and continuous in amplitude. To convert analog signal into digital signal, there are three essential steps that you need to understand. Let me explain those steps first. See in first step, we will be doing sampling. You can observe here we have analog signal that is continuous time signal. By sampling, we will be converting continuous time signal into discrete time signal. You can observe here we have sampled signal that is discrete time signal. By sampling, what we do is at well defined time interval, we will be taking samples of this analog signal. So you can observe after well defined time interval, here we have sampled signal. So first step is to have sampling by which we will be converting continuous time signal into discrete time signal. In second step, we will be performing quantization. See by quantization, we will be converting discrete time signal into discrete time discrete amplitude signal. You can observe here we have quantized signal. In quantized signal, at amplitude side, we have well defined levels. Here there can be any amplitude, like you can have 3.1, 4.1, 4.5. Likewise, you can have continuous amplitude over here. But after quantization, here there will be well defined amplitudes. So after quantization, we will be having discrete time, discrete amplitude. Discrete means you cannot have continuous amplitude over here. You can have well defined amplitude. Right. And third step is encoding. By encoding, we can represent this amplitudes in terms of digital values. Right. So when you want to convert analog signal into digital signal, there are three essential steps that you need to understand. First step is to have sampling where we will be converting continuous time signal into discrete time signal. So at discrete intervals, we will be having sampled values. After quantization, this amplitudes that is even getting discrete over here means we will be having well-defined amplitudes. And in third step, we will be giving digital values to each samples and we will be having digital data, right? Now I'll discuss about sampling process. So first of all, I'll discuss about basics of sampling. Sampling is a process to convert continuous time signal into discrete time signal, right? And to have that, we need to take sufficient number of samples. Why the reason is when you want to reconstruct the signal from sampled signal, at that time, there has to have sufficient samples. Otherwise, one cannot extract original signal. So what should be the sufficient number of samples? To understand that, you need to understand Nyquist rate. See here, we will be having original signal. Let us say that original signal is having maximum frequency FM. Then Nyquist rate, that will be 2 FM. So sampling rate, that should be greater than Nyquist rate, right? So FS, that is sampling rate. FS is equals to 1 divided by TS, where TS is interval in between two samples, right? So this sampling rate, that should be greater than or equal to 2 FM, where FM is maximum frequency of original signal, right? So sampling rate, 
that should be greater than 2 fm. See, there are three categories of sampling. One is ideal sampling, second is natural sampling, and third is flat top sampling. See, these three categories that I'll explain in future coming videos in this video lecture series. In this video, I'll be discussing about sampling. So, first of all, let me explain the waveforms that will give you more clarity. See, here we have original signal that is x of t and with this original signal let us consider maximum frequency is fm to perform sampling we will be taking impulse train let us say that signal is s of t so in sampling what we do we will be multiplying this original signal with impulse train and then we will be having sampled signal so sampled signal that is a multiplication of x of t and impulse train. Here spacing between impulse that is Ts. So sampling frequency that is fs is equals to 1 divided by Ts. Right. And by multiplying this two we will be having sampled signal. You can observe at zeroth instant we will be having this much amplitude. After Ts duration we will be having this much amplitude in sampled signal. So likewise, at TS spacing, we have samples and this is sampled signal. So first of all, let me discuss about statements of sampling theory. See, if you have original signal that is having maximum frequency FM, then duration of samples that should be lower than or equal to 1 divided by 2 FM. So this spacing, which is a spacing in between two samples, that should be lower than or equal to 1 divided by 2 fm. 2 fm, that is a Nyquist rate, right? If you want to define this in terms of frequency, then fs, that should be greater than or equal to 2 fm. That is the basic condition for sampling process, right? So if you have original signal, that is having maximum frequency component fm, then sampling duration should be lower than or equal to 1 divided by 2 fm and sampling frequency that should be greater than or equal to 2 fm. Now let me explain frequency spectrum that will give you more clarity. See here we have original signal. Let us consider that is having maximum frequency omega m, right? Here we have impulse train that is S of t and sampled signal y of t is multiplication of this two. So first of all you need to understand mathematics of impulse train. See impulse train that is algebraic sum of these impulses. These impulses are there at spacing of Ts duration. So that is summation where this n is ranging from minus infinite to plus infinite del of t minus n t s right and in terms of cosine also you can represent this summation that is 1 divided by t s into 1 plus 2 cos omega s t plus 2 cos 2 omega s t plus 2 cos 3 omega s t and so on. So this impulse train that is having one DC component that is 1 into 1 by Ts. Then it is having frequency component that is omega s. Then it is having frequency component 2 omega s and so on. So this is how we can represent this impulse train in time domain. See output is multiplication of original signal and impulse train. So if you multiply this two, then what will be my output? See my output, that will be a multiplication of x of t into impulse train. You need to understand this. See in terms of frequency, here we have one, one into x of t. In terms of frequency, it will be one divided by Ts into x of omega. When you multiply x of t with cos of omega st, then there will be two frequency components. 
ओमेगा प्लस ओमेगा एस एंड ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा एस सी ओमेगा बिलोंग्स टू दिस ओरिजिनल सिग्नल राइट इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई एक्स ऑफ टी विथ कॉस टू ओमेगा एस देन अगेन टू फ्रीक्वेंसी कंपोनेंट्स विल बी देर ओमेगा प्लस टू ओमेगा एस एंड ओमेगा माइनस टू ओमेगा एस राइट सो दिस विल बी माई वाई ऑफ ओमेगा इन टर्म्स ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी नाउ लेट मी प्लॉट इट ओवर हियर सो सी हियर एट जीरो वी विल बी हैविंग एक्स ऑफ ओमेगा दैट इज दिस विच इज हैविंग मैक्सिमम फ्रीक्वेंसी ओमेगा एम राइट एंड सी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू प्लस और माइनस ओमेगा एस वी हैव अनदर बैंड राइट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू प्लस और माइनस टू ओमेगा एस हियर देर विल बी फ्यू मोर बैंड एंड इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दिस सैंपल्ड सिग्नल देन सी दिस विथ ऑफ दिस वन बैंड दैट विल बी टू ओमेगा एम एंड एज इफ यू कीप your sampling frequency which is lower than 2 omega m in that case there will be overlapping of these bands that's why we should be keeping sampling frequency to be greater than or equal to 2 fm that even i'll explain you along with waveforms now let me discuss about aliasing effect see aliasing effect that happens due to under sampling that even i'll explain you by waveforms that will gives you more clarity one should know aliasing that is also referred as fold over error or under sampling now let me discuss about three case studies see in first case i'll be considering sampling frequency is greater than nyquist rate means fs is greater than 2 fm so here you will be observing this bands that is having spacing over here why the reason is this single band that is having width of 2 omega m right so here see this fs that is greater than 2 fm so if you have this 2 omega m which is lower than this fs in that case what will happen there will be spacing over here right but as if you consider fs is equals to 2 fm that is a nyquist rate then you will be observing this bands are touching exactly over here right this bands are touching exactly over here but if you decrease the sampling rate means as if we have sampling rate that is lower than nyquist rate in that case there will be overlapping of bands you can observe here there is a overlapping here there is a overlapping right so one should keep this in mind as and when you perform sampling at that time sampling frequency that should be greater than or equal to 2 fm to avoid aliasing aliasing means overlapping of bands right so before we perform sampling usually what we do is we use low pass filter at transmitter side so first of all we will be passing original signal through low pass filter so it will keep band limited signal over here if our actual signal is band limited in that case there are lower chances of aliasing right now let me discuss about key steps to avoid aliasing see first step is to keep sampling rate that should be greater than 2 fm right in second step one can use aliasing filter before sampling the reason is as if you keep low pass filter before you have sampling then you will be avoiding higher frequency components with original signal and after sampling we can have well defined condition that is fs is greater than or equal to 2 fm right so at receiver side we can use aliasing filter that is pre aliasing filter that one can say right in third step at receiver side we can use high order filter high order filter is having sharp edges 
if filter is having edges that is broader one in that case also there can be overlapping of bands right so at receiver side also we should be using higher order filters and one more step that can be used by keeping space in between successive bands of sampled signal one can avoid aliasing so aliasing happens due to overlapping of bands and that is happening due to sampling rate that is lower than Nyquist rate. So now I think you are having clear idea about what is sampling. Sampling is a process of conversion of continuous time signal into discrete time signal and that one can do by multiplying original signal with impulse train, right. But when you multiply this at the time there are two key things that you need to understand. One is sampling duration. Second is sampling rate. Sampling rate is Fs. That is 1 divided by Ts. And that sampling rate, that should be greater than or equal to 2 Fm, where Fm is maximum frequency of original information. I hope now you are having fair enough idea about what is sampling process. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.